We're here at the brand new California Academy of Sciences building with Stephanie Stone. And I want to know, what makes this building more than just your average science museum? Well, for one thing, the architecture is pretty stunning. It was done by Renzo Piano. And it's also been designed to be the greenest museum on Earth. Everything from solar panels on the roof to recycled denim insulation in the walls. Let's start right here. Just behind me is the Rainforest of the World Dome. This is a 90-foot diameter glass dome that allows visitors to walk through four different rainforests. What's really fascinating about this to me is it seems like a, an incredible mix of the built environment and the natural environment. Yeah, so the way the exhibit will work is you'll walk in on the first floor, you'll get onto this steel ramp, and you'll wind your way up through the different levels of rainforest Got until it. you get to the top. These ramps that wind up their way through the dome were one of the big challenges in constructing the dome. As you can see, they have a lot of complex curves and the radius of the dome is constantly changing, so figuring out how to bend the steel for these ramps was a real challenge. We ended up going to a roller coaster manufacturer to ask them to bend the steel for us. And all the steel in this building is recycled. 100% of the steel is recycled steel. So what are we seeing in this sort of space age piazza that we're looking at? This is the central courtyard for the academy. It's also a crucial part of the natural ventilation scheme. We don't have any air conditioning on the public floor, so we rely on the natural environment around us to cool the space. So as cool air drains down the slopes of the hills on the living roof, it drops in here to the piazza. And then there are louvered windows all the way around the sides of the building that open to funnel that fresh air out onto the exhibit floor. The glass that's around the perimeter of the top here is supported by this cable net structure rather than by columns. Renzo Piano felt very strongly he wanted this space to be an open space that wasn't interrupted by columns. So he used this cable net structure to support the glass and he said he drew his inspiration from a spider web. It uses the same principles of tension as a spider web. So I can see a little bit of the, the hills around here popping out. Can you show us the, the living roof? Yeah, absolutely. Let's just go upstairs and take a look. So we're up here on the living roof of the Academy now. It's planted with over 1.7 million native California plants. There are seven hills up on this roof, a reference to the seven hills of San Francisco. The two biggest hills, this one here houses the rainforest, and the other big hill houses the planetarium dome. We are here inside the planetarium, which we've been assured will actually have seats by the time the place opens. It was it difficult for the architect to incorporate this sort of really sciencey dome into sort of his overall vision? What, what has he said about it? Well, this planetarium is actually the reason that we have hills up on our roof. The building itself is 36 feet tall in most parts of the building, but this planetarium dome has to be much taller than that. So when Renzo was trying to figure out how to fit the building into the park seamlessly, he wanted the building to keep a low profile. But then, of course, the roof had to curve up to accommodate the dome of Morrison Planetarium, had to curve up again to accommodate the dome of the rainforest exhibit. So it's really like we've taken a piece of the park lifted it up, and then as it settles down over the exhibit elements, the roof takes the shape of those hills. Hey Stephanie, what are we looking at? What are these? Well, these are cabinets for our store, and they're an example of the sustainable materials that we're using in the building. They're made out of cypress trees that have fallen down. Well, where do you get like a bunch of cypress trees that have fallen down? We actually get them right in our backyard in Golden Gate Park. So clearly this is still under construction, but uh, what are you actually building? African Hall is 21 dioramas, and they're recreated from the originals, the same taxidermy animals that were there back in the 1930s. But we've added a few little surprises. We've added some live animals into some of the dioramas. We've like added some kind? new technology. Well, <laughs> you'll see at the end of the hall, there's a colony of African penguins, which are sure to be favorites here. We're underneath the rainforest dome inside a tube where you can kind of look up and see what's supposed to be a model of the Amazonian rainforest. Exactly. Um, and I have to say, it kind of reminds me of that hotel in Dubai that has this huge underwater sort of restaurant. Yeah, you know, that hotel was actually a problem for us as we were constructing this building because there are only two companies in the world that make acrylic for aquariums like this. That hotel used so much acrylic that there was a backlog on <laughs> the global orders of acrylic. <laughs> So how thick are we talking? I mean, is it like, like... It depends on the window. This one's only about four inches thick here, but the acrylic over on the other side of the elevator is 17 inches thick. The reason that this window doesn't have to be as thick is that the curvature of the tunnel diffuses the pressure. Oh, I think some of the fish are kind of scary looking. Those little guys are actually piranhas. Really? But they're vegetarian piranhas, so they're not very menacing. It's nice, huh? Yeah.